So this week's topic, entitlement versus altruism. And they might not seem like these two uh, constructs are something that are completely diametrically opposed. They, they aren't opposites per se, but I, I think that there's a sense at which they kind of are. So let's explore the point. This is a topic that's kind of been requested of me to talk about from a friend of mine. He's like, oh, I wanna hear your take on the entitled society that we are in these days. And that's something that you hear a lot largely from people on the right, largely from people on Fox News bitching and whining about the idea that millennials are entitled or people that voted for Bernie are, are just entitled and they want everybody to give them everything. And that is not at all at the heart of what these folks are about. There's a lot of very hardworking millennials out there. I'd even argue that the most of them are. We do see it all the time in public. You see these fuckers who are, you know, holding up public transportation because they want the best seat. Oh, I want to have the best seat, so don't move anywhere because uh, I'm going to be the one to get the best seat and holding everybody up behind them or holding up everybody at the ice cream shop because they want to have a damn taste of every last fucking flavor and then they end up settling on vanilla. We see people treat people in the service industry like absolute dog shit because they think they're just entitled to do so. I'm the boss of you right now, so I'm just gonna be a dick and run your ass off. And I'm gonna bitch about there not being enough alcohol in my drink. And I'm gonna bitch about my food not being hot enough or being too hot or everything isn't just so, so perfect. So I'm entitled the best. Fuck you, get over yourself. Just get over yourself and why not just treat people with a little bit of decency, with a little bit of an altruistic manner about the way you go about things? Is that really so bad? Where does this nature of entitlement that's so pervasive in our culture come from? Where are its roots? Where did it first rear its evil head? You know, when I look back on kind of where these things come from, if you ask me, I would say that at its root, American entitlement has its roots in Ayn Rand, and also in the 1980s. So bear with me. I believe that Ayn Rand and the 1980s have a lot to do with the invasion of this entitlement culture that we live in today. Don't forget, in the 1980s, it was all about the me generation, right? Perhaps this is a case of hypocrisy? <laughs> or cognitive dissonance? <laughs> Go back to the other video again. I mean, you know, you're calling yourselves the me generation. If that doesn't sound like a bunch of entitled fucking kids, then what does? But I digress. Perhaps you've heard of Ayn Rand. Her philosophy was very influential in a lot of the think groups that are very influential in the uh, Republican Party. Uh, people like Paul Ryan uh, have been very outspoken fans of Ayn Rand, and I believe I have heard that he makes Ayn Rand kind of required reading for uh, his staffers and things like that. And not to say that there's anything wrong with required reading, I just don't think Ayn Rand is the way to go about things. Ayn Rand's philosophy is basically that of ego-driven selfishness. Ayn Rand said that capitalism and altruism are ultimately incompatible. She goes on and says, and I'll go ahead and read it here, the choice is clear cut. Either a new morality of rational self-interest with its consequences of freedom, justice, and progress, and man's happiness on earth, or the primordial morality of altruism with its consequences of slavery, brute force, and stagnant terror, and sacrificial furnaces. It's, it just sounds like a bunch of shite to me, to be honest with you. I mean, first off, it is not altruism that leads to slavery. It, if you really remember where slavery was, it was selfish landowners feeling entitled to just get free labor. That's entitlement, and that's where it came from, from greed. Greed begets slavery. The greed of some guy who just wants to take, not from altruism. Altruism is what helped to bring about the end of slavery. It was the the altruistic nature of abolitionists who decided, you know what, we have had enough with, with this. So that right there, I think, completely ruins any credibility that anybody sees in Ayn Rand. Altruism is not primordial, as she said it. It is really, by definition, quite the opposite. It is the more altruistic that is the more enlightened and the further from being the primordial. These ideals of Ayn Rand have 
been adopted by many of the powerful to kind of legitimize their own selfish actions. I'm sure that you've heard a whole lot of talk about the idea of fiduciary responsibility and that being a driving ethic. And again, I do understand fiduciary responsibility. Let me be very clear about this. I'm not saying that it is bad to be responsible with your money, but when it is at all cost and it is taken to the nth degree, that's where it gets problematic. And that is where, that is where Fiduciary responsibility is no longer an ethic, but it is somewhat destructive. Another place where this idea of fiduciary responsibility being a leading ethic and, and the ethic of greed, so to speak, comes again back to the 1980s uh, with the movie Wall Street. In the movie Wall Street, the antagonist character, Gordon Gekko, has this speech about where he talks about the idea of ethical greed, basically, very much out of the Ayn Rand playbook, where he says greed is good. It's just such a warped logic. The thing is, the writers of that movie did such a good job that they really sold it. And so then, when the movie came out, Oliver Stone, who released the movie, kind of had his head in his hands, and he was like, why is everybody worshipping this Gordon Gecko guy so much? He's the villain in my movie, and everybody's emulating him. And there you go. That was something of a contributor to the me generation, something that they craved so much. Validation for their entitlement, validation for their greed. Ah, I'm not bad for being greedy. Greed is good. And they all went right along with that. But again, we need to get away from the idea of just this basic greed ethic. We need to get back to something a little bit more altruistic so that we can lift society as a whole. I think back to those very famous words from JFK, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Ask not what America can do for you, but what together we can do for the brotherhood of man. That's altruism. A community built on altruistic brotherhood. So I ask you, do we want a chaotic society where everybody's selfish desires are at odds with one another and we're at this complete struggle over that at all times? Or a civilized society? with a more philosophical enlightenment, so that together we can create progress. So that's just my thoughts on the subject. Again, if you have differing thoughts or tangent thoughts or just anything at all, by all means, drop them down in the uh, comments section. If you thought it was worth your while, give me a like, a share, whatever. And uh, if you subscribe, maybe you can see more of whatever it is that I have to say. Folks, thanks for visiting. Again, my name is Ralph Cudworth. This is The Soci. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's Kumbaya, it's Hakuna Matata. Well, it's maybe not Hakuna Matata. I mean, it's not, it's not so laissez-faire. It's, let's have a drink together.